Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanted to do a quick review of Algo Expert. Uh, Algo Expert is one of the products that you can use uh, during your preparations for tech interviews for companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, so on and so forth. And I frequently get asked via my Instagram DMs what I thought about Algo Expert in comparison with something like Lead Code. Uh, so I thought I'd briefly talk about not only Algo Expert, but how it compares to something like Lead Code. All right, before we get started, if you're new to this channel, I usually talk about software engineering, productivity, tech interviews, and that kind of stuff. So if you're into it, please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new content that I make. All right, let's get started. So for the data structures sort of crash course it's got a good amount of material what are data structures complexity analysis memory big o logarithmic stuff arrays linked lists you know it's like an introduction i think each video is around 10 to 30 minutes long this is pretty useful and pretty well done i think clem makes uh, really good videos and he's like a very good explainer of things but here's where i question the value of this if you are wondering what data structures are when you're buying algoexpert.io then you're not going to do many of those problems right like the assumption here is like if you don't know what data structures even are or or what an array is you want be able to solve any of this problem let alone like the difficult ones right like so while this is useful as part of a prep tool that preps you for especially like top tier tech interviews I, I i don't see value in this it's nice but if you are looking at this learning hash tables right now you're in bigger trouble and lead code has a very similar approach where they go very practical code first approach in their explore section i think i prefer that because they don't really talk about the fundamentals of the data structure they just assume that you know and they'll just be like hey how do we add stuff to this how do we remove stuff to this and they'll give you a reasonable question that kind of covers that topic and i think that's better uh, the coding interview question is the next section I think this this section is pretty well laid out it's organized by category or you can group it by difficulty and and it's got a decent amount of question I do love the quality over quantity approach uh, I think a lot of time we fall into the pitfall of doing mindlessly doing a lot of problems but not really grasping the core concepts behind it so I do like that it's focusing on a limited set of high quality problem but that being said, I also have an issue because we don't know why these problems were picked, right? Like, I mean, you can trust Clem and his team to do the best job here, but it's still a subjective list of questions. I do think these are a decent amount of questions and decent value, but why were these questions picked over the others, right? Like, we don't know. I wish they told us like, hey, this covers this technique and maybe like a sub, another grouping by technique or something like that. But at this moment, okay, I mean, there are a lot of questions that are very hard, right? Like why these questions are picked, I don't know. Versus if you go to lead code, if you look at it, there are a lot of questions, but they've got difficulty and most importantly, they've got frequency. So you can try to sort by frequency, do the highest frequency questions. You can see what are what acceptance rates are. So like you can try things that a lot of other people are failing to do well, you know. You can also sort by company. So you know if you're interviewing at Microsoft, for example, you can sort by like you can filter by Microsoft and then sort by highest frequency and then attack it that way. And then of course it's got the regular categorization and stuff like that. So I think this is a much richer form of picking the best problems to practice versus even though this is focused on quality, we don't have a good explanation of why these are the best problems to do that. And if they made that clear, I think this would have much more value in my mind. But I mean, overall, it's, it's, it's good. So the other section here in the coding part is coding interview assessment. Uh, and this is typically like your on-site or, or online assessment um, emulation here. I think Lead Code has something similar where it's a mock and you can like sort of try your mock interviews and it'll give you like by company here, but this one's just generic. And um, I tried doing one and if I click on it, it says assessments are difficult, complete 10 or more normal questions to unlock. It just assumes that it's too difficult. Maybe, maybe I can do it, you know, maybe I can, but at least let me try it. And then if I fail, then sort of tell me to do practice problems before I attempt another one. It's just like, 
do 10. I mean, it's, I think it's trying to gamify it, but this is kind of, I have not, I don't have time to solve 10 questions to kind of look at this. I suspect it's very similar to lead codes where you can click on a online assessment section and you'll always say like two hours, one hours, whatever. And I'm sure it'll give you like a dashboard of like where you land, what sort of your performance is and that kind of stuff. Sort of similar to lead code. So, uh, so the next section I wanna talk about is the coding interface itself. So let's pick like a random question here, like this guy, and then just talk about the interface. It's got a layout option where it's quad or try. I definitely like the try much better. If I were them, I'd even remove the raw output section over here because it makes it a little bit cluttered by my, the overall design is really intuitive, right? Uh, you know what this does, you know the languages, a lot of language options. You can choose the font, you can choose your text editor uh, commands, you can do dark theme or light theme, and then a lot of other highlight options, coloring options. You can do remove highlighting, and then I love the data visualizer as well. So it's pretty intuitive, and I love the fact that they also had a time here which is really critical because you want to always practice on a timed session right the overall design and functionality is really outstanding here it's really useful it does feel like you're using a full ID the only concern I have it's it's a little bit too cluttered it has too many options on the screen versus if the interface in lead code is much simpler right I really like this clean interface because what you want to do is you want to have a interface that mimics your real interview setting because that believe it or not even if it affects you like five percent it does affect you when you do a real interview you're either using things like Google Docs or codepath.io and like things like that all of them are very simple they're like one question or there's not even one question it's just like a plain document and the interview usually pastes the question to you so you want to mimic that as much as possible because when you're stressed under interview settings that familiarity really helps when you actually go for a real interview it's probably going to be more like this right so you want to emulate sort of that kind of situation so i wish they had like a a minimalist view where I don't need to see anything or at least they would disappear hide out of the screen and then I'd have just that bit so that it could, could emulate a real situation that's the only feedback other than that they have one solution video explanation and his explanation Clem's explanation are phenomenal I'll just tell you that much one thing though like when in in, in lead code uh, related to this is you've got a solution and it's crowd crowdsourced right because it's crowdsourced, um, it's got like a multiple ways of doing this, like DP approach, brute force, and then they'll explain you usually the solutions in different languages. There's a, a discussion section here down below that people will argue about things. And sometimes like discussions have like better answers than actual answers, you know. And then you've also got the discuss sections here where people will like really talk about like someone's posted a video. Like I think that is way more beneficial uh, than just one solution. And I know like this is probably the be one of the best optimal solutions, but because it's just from one person, you don't really get to see the different perspectives, right? On the positive side, on lead code, sometimes like, like easy and short, right? Like easy and short doesn't really always mean readable or like that's probably not how you want to write it. And I've seen some really bad solutions in discussions as well. So because it's it's a discussion in crowdsource, you have to kind of weed through the bad solutions yourself. So both have pros and cons. One, you'll get to see multiple perspectives and pick and choose which which is more intuitive to you uh, versus in here, it's curated by one person or a team of people. So it's always consistent, always high quality, but you don't always get the second angle or alternate alternative perspective that's more intuitive to you. So, so overall, I think they've done a great job. Uh, but for now, I think because of the of the multiple different angles of explanations, discussions, like, you know, written solutions and multiple approaches, I would still and and, and the simple minimalistic interface, I think I'd still give lead code uh, as as the winner here. All right, let's go to the system design, which is which was more interesting to me. So the next content here in Algo Expert is systems systems expert. I suppose I think it's a good introduction uh, to system design, and and like I said, Clem is a really good explainer of things. But so there are like 25 videos here. I watched most most of them. It just serves these videos just serve as an introduction to something existing 
right? Uh, it doesn't really teach you system design. And honestly, like, to be fair to the team at Alga Expert, you can't just learn system design by watching 10, 12, or 25, 15, 20 minute videos, you know? Like, system design is one, like there are many books written about it. There are a lot of like deep technical knowledge that is required. And a lot of times it's just about uh, you ha building years of experience and kind of understanding the trade-off based on your experience, right? So uh, even if they really wanted to make this a thorough system design question, it would really be s difficult. But I need to kind of like be critical about it because it's a paid service and the question is always is, does it provide value, right? And at this point, I think because it's impossible to teach system design as a course, because it's a it's a like 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 almost like a life learn learn lifelong learning experience, right? Um, it's it's really impossible to put it down in like videos, let alone like 25 very high level videos, but you will get the basic concepts. So you, this could be a great starting point where you get the topics get a brief understanding about them and then kind of go like study in depth on your own, you know? The other problem I had with system design from Alga Expert or Systems Expert is the actual videos themselves. I looked at a few of them and the problem here is like, I, like the good thing is that it, I think it has a good set of questions. It covers from like your APIs to, you know, like video distribution to uh, messaging and newsfeed, which has like a big fan out problem for big social media. So like, I think it has a good breadth, but the problem is the actual mock interview the interviewer almost agrees to everything Clem says, and that is absolutely no, not how it is in a real interview. Uh, the, the solutions proposed in the video are good, but then because system design doesn't really have a right or a wrong solution, the interviewer can, can and will always ask you for an alternative option, right? For example, like a lot of times here, um, Clem will pick MySQL and and never talk about why he chose MySQL over something like, you know, like a, maybe a DocDB or maybe like a wide column like Cassandra, right? So it's fine to pick MySQL. There's no nothing wrong about it, but you need to be able to reason about the trade-off on why. It could just be simple to get started. It could just be, that's all you know and you don't have much experience about a wide column, that's fine. But the interviewer will ask, oh, interesting, why not a wide column? Or why not this, why not that, right? Like. That absolutely lacks here. And the sum of the follow-up questions the interviewer asks is too basic. It's it, like, it's it's not, uh, it's not representative of a real interview. And then like, even like MySQL, right? Like they may go into details about replications and like the headaches you can have with like asynchronous replication in MySQL versus um, like a more like a node-based uh, leaderless system like Cassandra, like what are the trade-offs in that? Where will you struggle on the other end? That kind of stuff isn't really, it's very hand-wavy and like no, none of the videos really go into detail about it. And in general, I think it's probably okay for a super entry-level, you know, L3, E3, uh, 59 at Microsoft, that kind of level, but anything over that, I don't think this will cut it. I think it's a great starting point and I know they just added this uh, and I think it will evolve and become better over time. But as of now, just take it as a super high level introduction to system design and not like a interview prep level detail. And then finally, system design as a quiz. You don't really gain any knowledge from it. You just learn the keywords like, oh, reverse proxy can be used as a load balancer and Nginx is a popular choice. You learn that from the quiz, but in a real interview, what value is that? Because the interview is gonna easily ask you, hey, why are you using reverse prox proxy instead of a, a hardware load balancer, right? Like, or why Nginx instead of HA proxy? Or why use application level load balancer instead of a network level load balancer? What happens when your load balancer doesn't are, uh, are at capacity? How do you handle that? Uh, for failover, what's like uh, why would you choose or which situation would you choose active active or active passive like you don't really you don't really get any of that from here so just take it as a very high level course the interviewer needs to be much more intense about his questions and in depth about his trade-off discussions and alternative uh, discussions kind of thing this is too agreeable so that's my that's my thing. Uh, and then the final section, honestly, is the is the bonus, which has behavioral, which is, I think, pretty decent. Uh, and the trick about behavioral is like, 
no one can really teach you behavioral based on your situation because your situation is always unique but what videos i saw there i think like i said clem is a great explainer of things and i think i agree with all of the videos it's really good uh it talks about the right things uh and then the and then the the coding interview tips is also on point uh, all of it is pretty accurate i mean obviously he has a lot of experience with it too uh the algo expert certificate is a pure gimmick like i don't see any value in that and i don't think any company cares about whether you completed algo expert or not uh, but it's cool it's like a gamified system right hey i did it so like maybe some swag with your friends if you're competing that could work you know so as far as pricing goes um uh, for the core algo expert value um like the coding part alone it's 99 bucks i honestly think lead code is a way better value at this point uh because lead code free itself gives you a lot of questions and the coding interface and all that so that's almost comparable to the paid version of algo expert and if you wanted extra features like discussions mocks and like other resources it's slightly more expensive at 159 but i do think you get a much larger collection of questions better categorization by company frequency a discussion forum where people share their interview experiences and things like that uh, and um, the solutions are crowdsourced so you get multiple angles of uh, solutions so i think as of now i would pick a uh, lead code as a better value and not algo expert for systems expert there is no counterpart in lead code maybe you could get uh, something like grokking the system design which again i think is too high level as well but honestly just talking about systems expert alone at 79 dollars maybe if you are right out of school um, or uh, college maybe this is worth the 79 dollars but for anything over like if you have already some amount of industry experience this will not cut it you'll have to spend a significantly more amount of time in learning system designs whether it's reading engineering blogs looking at uh, conferences and talks given by various companies buying multiple books i would rather spend on that than this uh, and then the final thing is the combined value at 139 and again like I said, because of how these other two have worked out, I still think this is the direct comparison to Lead Code Premium, which is at 160 bucks a month. It's slightly more expensive, but I still, still till now, think it's a better value. Uh, and if you just had some money to spend, I'd spend it on that. So that's basically it, guys. Uh, that's my review of Algo Expert and what I think about it especially compared to lead code and like i said before this could change a year from now or even six months from now because i know the team at algo expert is rapidly iterating and adding new features so please consider this review with a notion of time in mind that being said uh if you want me to review any other product related to engineering or um, tech interviews please do let me know i've tried a lot of different products ranging from really uh, cost effective ones that are like 20 30 dollars to really expensive that can cost thousands of dollars uh, so i can provide some insight if you guys are looking into that kind of stuff so let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching see you around cheers yeah.